If, like me, you're a pipe smoker, you probably use quite a few matches. You light one, throw it away. And then, you probably have to use another one. Well, that's cheap enough, I suppose. But have you ever stopped and really looked at a match and wondered to yourself what else it's good for? Well, you could try doing this with it. All it takes is a steady hand, infinite patience, an eye for minute detail, and some bits of broken razor blade. Raymond Cook has always been a bit of a handyman. He used to build all his own kitchen and bedroom cupboards. And then one day, because he'd been having difficulty in holding his hammer and chisels, he went to his doctor and was told he had rheumatoid arthritis. Over the last 12 years, it's got progressively worse, until now Raymond even has to wear plastic supports on his wrists because the joints are so weak. But in spite of this, he was determined not to lose his enthusiasm and his ability to create things. Ray, when did you first look at a matchstick and say to yourself, I think I can do something with that? found that I had the ability and uh, I turned to it more when um, I started getting this arthritis and found that I was having a lot of time in bed and not being able to do very much at all. And uh, turned to this as a form of mental therapy, I suppose, really, much as anything. Did the doctors in the hospital encourage this because it might help you to maintain the use of your hands? Yes. Um, on one occasion, the specialist who had just operated on my left hand um, was very interested in these things, and um, he asked one of his registrars to go and fetch something, and when he brought it back, it was his fine, one of his finest scalpel blades, which he offered to me, and uh, I took a look at it and said, I'm sorry, it's much too coarse for my work. How do you select the matches that you think are going to be good raw material for you? There's only going to be two or three in a normal box of about 40 that are going to have a true enough grain to, um, to be good for a carving. Having selected them, give them a good tugging about with the nails to make sure there are no hidden cracks in the grain. Having done that, the next process is to prepare the blade. An ordinary double-edged razor blade of the old type, the modern um, ones with uh, stainless steel and this sort of thing don't split like the old ones. Um, these brittle blades, you just snap them in half <coughs> and then break off a corner so that you're left with a very sharp pointed cutting edge. And this is then a small piece of sellotape wrapped around the handle end, as it were, the blunt end, um, and you're ready for carving. What was the most difficult one you ever carved? Well, I have one that took about uh, 18 hours of hard work and involved using the whole uh, length of the match. Um, this is what I had to do. We <clears throat> mark out carefully along each side, one third distance, and cut in one third distance so that the t four corners of the match are removed and each represent one ninth of the whole wood of the match and you finish up with a cross shaped cross section then notching out where the end of each link comes and so that they appear alternately on the cross section of the timber then uh, Drilling is the next process. Drilling not only at the end of each link, between each link, but diagonally through the wood so that uh, when one comes to carving the links, they will the drill holes will form part of the end cut of each link and it will fall apart as you carve up to it. Once the first link has been loosened and separated from the remainder, this is left rough and can be cleaned up at the end when they're all finished. Uh, then it is merely a repetitive process of going along through each link, loosening it carefully from the succeeding one, and uh, at the end saying, well, 
now for a good clean-up. Ray, is it possible to put a value on your carved matchsticks? I don't think so. I never have. I've often been asked if I would sell them. But to me, they're either worth nothing, just little pieces of match wood, in fact, or they're worth an awful lot more than I could ask or expect people to pay. Uh, I don't think that um, I could sell them. I give the occasional one away, but uh, I think uh, people at home and around about find them very interesting to look at, so I'm just gradually building up a collection that I can keep for myself.